Hello and welcome back to Verbos Mode at Spring I.O. 2025, brought to you by Toxcare. And uh, the, as everything is new in this um, uh, interview program, we have a, two guests for the first time as well. Uh, so Kat and Pasha, welcome. Hello, hello Barb, hello everyone. And Yep, Pasha. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. And uh, um, you mentioned that um, you had a talk about, or maybe not a talk, but we, we will talk about something that is called Project Laden. We had. And well, it was a part of our talk. Our talk was much bigger than that. Yeah. But we actually have a part about Project Laden. Let's start with that. Me personally, very ashamed after you shaved me into to admit that I have no idea what are you talking about. Do you know anything about how to improve startup performance of your application? Oh, of course. We have uh, GraalVM, nice. we have Native Image, right. and we have Crack. Right. And I know about Crack because you visited uh, the Nashville Java user group and spoke about Crack. Uh, also, Build Propulsion Lab. And on Build Propulsion Lab, which we, as we mentioned, the previous reincarnation of the verbose mode. Uh, that uh, we did with a great company called Gradle. Remind me, at which Java did you start your development journey? 1.3. And ended it uh, still there? Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah. But active development? Active development, probably um, 8. Okay, so you remember Java 5. Oh, Java 5 was one of the most important releases out there. Uh, annotations, automatic boxing, unboxing, there are tons of great stuff in Java 5. Do you remember a small feature called CDS? CDS? Class data sharing. Oh yeah, 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 it was absolutely unused, unusable, no one gave uh, shit about it and it never uh, go anywhere. It actually get, it actually made a long way to AppCDS, which appeared where? Uh, as far as I remember, AppCDS appeared in Java 16, Apps although I might be mistaken, 14 maybe. Maybe 14, maybe 16. And AppCDS is a thing that allows you to decrease your spring application startup time by, well, seconds sometimes. Wow, that's a lot. Yes, and it is based on CDS, Wow, which was totally useless. Absolutely. And this is cool, but Project Laden gets the same idea to the next level. Okay, you need to explain what uh, CDS is, what AppCDS is, and what Project Laden is. Well, right, the idea behind uh, CDS is pretty straightforward. So CDS, or Class Data Sharing, uh, is a JVM feature that uh, enables the JVM to load a set of system classes, um, save them into the, to the disk, and then the JVM reads this uh, archive with the class metadata and then so the startup is faster because it's loading the classes from the archive is faster than loading them from scratch well uh, that as my colleague Pasha said uh, was pretty useless at that time but then uh, the feature got improved and uh, AppCDS loads not only system classes but also application classes and it loads them dynamically so you run your application uh, the JVM observes it and then uh, loads uh, the use classes uh, into the archive. So the startup is much better. Well, I wouldn't say much better, but better. This sounds a lot like crack. Yeah, no, not at all. Because. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Yes, but no. Like, well, everything that improves startup time. Sounds like a uh, crack. Uh, yeah, but no, but I mean in terms of that, some that, that the state is saved on disk and then yes, read but it's it. not the same. Uh, like crack uh, saves the whole memory. On the yeah, memory. yeah, of, of course. So this, this thing is, is much it. like kind of more primitive, yeah. but also much safer. Yeah, like you just save. What was it? Compiled application class? No, it's a code of, mm, of application class. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, you read and parse, well, not you, the JVM reads and parses so application and system classes, save them into the archive. So that's only a tiny bit of what actually crack does. Yeah, but the, but the, it's the same idea. The, sta the, the state Let's is save saved. something yeah, and restore it from it. Exactly. Yes. That, that's what I meant. 
All right. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, may I give a piece of ancient history? Here? Yes, absolutely. We are in this podcast for uh, ancient, ancient history. history. Absolutely. Beautiful. So, do you know why CDS was impl- implemented in Java Five? I don't remember. I might have known one. Yes. Yeah, so the remember. idea was actually very progressive, I think, because back then we were launching multiple JVMs on one machine. And as we launch many JVMs on one machine from one JDK, essentially, we need to share the classes inside Java. This way, every consequential startup, Java itself, will start faster. And JIT was, was not as good as it is now, obviously. Mm-hmm. It made a long way, too. Of course. And this is why well, you, you are telling that it was useless. It was useful, but in one very specific narrow sense. Uh, right, right. Now it kind of uh, gets back to me. But, but now it's not the case because obviously yes. everything runs in containers. Every container is a different machine. And then you don't share the, the, the yes, preloaded classes. Yes, now it's impossible. But now of we course. have archives with these classes, with AppCTS. We can store them in containers. Or in base in, image. Like in your base image. Or for example, in Artifactory, yep. it's just a blob, right? Yep. So you can mount it somewhere, put it in Artifactory, then load it on your, on your deploy and reuse it. Mount to your container and reuse it. Uh, uh, interesting. All right. Okay. So far, so good. Next step, project later. Do you want it? Sure. Sure. Why not? So yeah, uh, the idea of loading something into the archive and then reading that is tempting. Yeah. So Project Laden goes beyond AppCDS. We still have this concept of uh, the archive, right? But with Project Laden, we load not only classes, but also methods, uh, some compiled and pre-optimized code. And uh, so the archive is bigger and the metadata is more useful. So the startup logically is even faster. And that looks even more like crack. It will look more and more like crack. As, as more and more information gets in. Yes. Yes. But it will be never all the information because you remember the issue with crack, right? It saves all the credentials on yeah, the hard drive, of course. which is potentially unsafe. Yeah. And yeah. actually, if you build your crack image for your, let's say, staging environment, you won't be able to reuse it for production. Uh, because all the variables yes, have changed. all the variables, everything. Actually, your URLs can change, well, anything. Yeah, yeah, of course. So here it's a lot, a lot smarter, and they introduced a concept called condensers, mm-hmm. which is like which parts of application we actually want to save for now. Okay? Oh, right. OK. And they're tunable. Uh, by default, they have seven of them. Each of them puts some limitations on your application. And if you are not fine with this limitation, you turn off one of these condensers, you lose uh, a, sli- a slight of bit, yeah, you lose something. So you essentially ch- trade freedom for your startup time. Yep. And it is still better than native image in my imagination at least. Mm-hmm. Because, well, in, a, in native image you don't have any choice. It's either work or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's nice that you mentioned native image actually because to my mind Project Laden is closer to native image than to crack. But yeah, with condensers, we have flexibility. And uh, it is said in the project documentation that if you can um, apply all the condensers, it might be possible in the future to reach the whole world, uh, the closed world assumption. And which is native image. image. Yes, which wow. is native image. Okay, so that's like a gradual native image, like a modular native image. Yeah, kind of, sort of, but what I like about it, until you are not native image, you will always have all the nice features of uh, usual JVM. You will have your garbage collectors, you will have your, I don't know, JIT compiler, which, which is extremely important and doesn't exist in native image, at least, not, yes. in, not in community version, and I believe not in enterprise version too. Mm-hmm. And you can choose your garbage collector. So you can choose Shenandoah, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Obviously, you will have to use Shenandoah while you're creating this archive for Project Laden. Yep, yep. But this is fine. You probably you're not, you know what you're doing. Yeah. If you, you will use the same yes, one yes. In, uh, in compiler and compiler. And otherwise, it will just uh, throw an error. Uh, like, common arguments are different. Common line arguments are different. Please relaunch with different mm-hmm. arguments. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ex- excellent. Interesting. 
Uh, one unrelated topic that just came to mind when we spoke about ancient history, and you spoke about how faster Jeep became. Uh, I know that Belsov does some magic that actually allows running uh, very old code uh, and, and old and slow JVMs with the, uh, the performance of the latest ones. This is so close to truth. The truth is we have a thing called library performance edition. Mm -hmm. It's not like we run all the JVM on, we actually run your JVM, but you have this Java 8 or Java 11 code base and you do not need to change a single line of code to get all the performance benefits of Java of newer Java versions. Not only performance benefits, but for example, newer Java garbage collectors. G1 GC was fully rewritten from Java since Java 8 to yep. Java 17. Yep. Fully, not a single common line, mm -hmm. but maybe a single. Yeah, uh, because the interface remained the same. <laughs> but I, I, I'm trying to be close yep. and still a little bit dramatic. And if it doesn't work for you, well, we are ones to blame and we will fix it. It means that something is wrong with us. You will, you still won't be able to use features of your syntax. Yeah, of course. But you're probably but, fine with it. Yeah, it's, it's not only you're fine with it, you're probably stuck with it, right? The yes. reason why you are on Java 8 or, or 11 is because you cannot move forward because you have a dependency for like WebLogic or WebSphere, God forbid. Well, yeah, I'm not sure whether Pasha will like uh, this metaphor or not, but I prefer to think of a Liberica Performance Edition as um, the situation when you have your old FIAP for example, tried and true, and you place the engine of uh, the Maserati into your old Fiat. So your car stays the same, but it flies. It's a, it's a, it's a great metaphor, um, regardless whether Pasha loves it or not. It is good. Um, I have so many things to say. Yeah. Uh, but, but you won't. But you won't because I won't, yeah. because I want to highlight another uh, limitation of uh, running on this old uh, code. It's not uh, only the JVM, but it's also all the dependencies that are that their like and support vulnerable. is ended, and they might be potentially vulnerable. And for that, we have tax care, which will do exactly what the Liberica Performance Edition does for your JVM. It will bring it up to speed with the latest uh, security vulnerabilities patched. So, in an essence, when you take Liberica Performance Edition and Taxcare and the support, you have zero reasons to upgrade. Well, you still have reasons to upgrade, but because you want new syntax, but you won't. It's just too expensive. It doesn't make any sense to upgrade. Yes. This is what yes. you want to yes. say. Yes. And there is no, yes. There is a reason for upgrade. You want all the latest uh, loads and whistles, but if you can't, you will still be in a very good shape and in a very good posture, both for performance and security point of view. May I ask a provocative question? Hey, yeah, you go for it. That's the only questions you know how to ask. I must argue, but I probably won't. But look, you support Java libraries. Why the heck is it called tax care? Tax, tax is Linux, right? Speaking about ancient history and uh, historical anecdotes, um, Taxcare came out of a company called uh, Cloud Linux, and uh, uh, Cloud Linux started 15 years ago as a company that did software for Linux hosting companies. So, if you had uh, like a, 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 if you provided Linux operating systems as the infrastructure as a service, there was a lot of stuff that um, uh, Cloud Linux could give you. One of them were um, uh, how do you say it? Uh, pauseless restarts. Uh, that you could uh, patch your kernel. library's kernel uh, without downtime uh, in your Linux servers. Uh, and once we are talking about patching libraries, the next thing is to give people those libraries. And uh, this is where Taxcare kind of started by providing those Linux uh, uh, patched libraries that then were applied um, without any downtime. Uh, and as uh, people saw that it's good to have libraries patched by Taxcare for Linux, the next natural step was 
libraries for programming languages. We started with Java, we started with Spring and a lot of other Java libraries. Um, next, uh, we are looking at Angular and AngularJS um, and then probably PHP and Python and what's not. Generally, the backporting of security vulnerabilities is pretty much the same process for all of them. And obviously, if we can help customers to stay secure while they cannot upgrade immediately, it is good for any programming language. So are you telling me that TaxCare is not a new company like two years old? It's actually no such thing for like 15 years? Absolutely. The technology for patching the vulnerabilities is, is exactly the same for uh, the entire history of Cloud Linux. TaxCare is new in terms of um, it's, it's a new business model, it's a new line of products, but obviously the know-how is there for many, many years. I love it. And we are kind of in the same business. We are in the same We business. are trying to support our, even all the GTKs, zero CV, right? And you know what this business is? What is? Developer productivity. Oh, yes. And you know what's, what else is funny is that you started with Linux and then you expanded your influence onto Java and we started with Java and then we went into the Linux world. So a kind of very, very tight bound. Yeah, yeah, and developer productivity is right there because we allow developers to focus what they really care about, and that's writing code. If they have uh, limitations, we are here to help and make them uh, productive even when they cannot be on the billing edge. You lost this. We are not here to judge. We are here to help. Exactly. That's what we do. We are here to help. Perfect. Thank you very much, folks. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. And uh, we still have more episodes of the Verbals mode uh, here at uh, Spring IO 2025. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes.